Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the fourth lecture of Chapter 7, where we're going to introduce the idea of conservative forces and potential energy. So conservative force field or conservative forces. Suppose there is a scalar valued function. We can find a scalar valued function. We're going to call it uppercase V so that our force is minus the gradient of V. Okay, in that case, the total work done, think of the previous setting, by the force, this special force, in moving the particle f along C from P1 to P2, just like we discussed last time, is F dot dr, P1 to P2, the work line integral. It is V at P1 minus V at P2. In terms of kinetic energy, it was kinetic energy at T, P2 minus kinetic energy at P1. So different difference here, and that minus sign is important, and we'll see where it comes from. Okay, let's prove this result. So the differential of V is just dV dx dx, dV dy dy, dV dz dz, or gradient of V dot dr. So let's take that and plug it into the work line integral expression. So f dot dr, f is minus gradient v dot dr, but that is just, as we just showed, minus dv, the total differential. So we can do the integral. It's minus V at P2 minus P1, which is just V at P1 minus V at P2. Easy. So you, you've seen this before when we talked about independence of paths for our line integrals. When the force is expressed as minus the gradient of a potential, sorry, <laughs> getting ahead of myself, of a scalar valued function, then the line integral is independent of the path. And we rewrite these two theorems, which we've seen all, already. The force can be written as minus the gradient of a scalar valued function V if its curl vanishes. Okay. And the opposite is true. Well, this, is, this is harder to, to deal with for the types of problems we're going to be working with. If the force is conservative, meaning it's equal to, it can be expressed as minus the gradient of a scalar valued function, then its integral around any closed non-intersecting curve that simply connected is zero. The work done, in other words, the work done in traversing a closed path for conservative forces is zero. So now I can talk about this terminology that I keep slipping into. The scalar valued function V having this property that the force is conservative is called the potential energy. And this has a nice history in terms of the terminology. And Sommerfeld, in his book, has a wonderful discussion of it, if you want to go more into it. Sometimes it's called a scalar potential or just a potential. Sometimes potential energy function. All right. Now we can often write the potential, especially in one dimension, as an indefinite integral of f dot dr. Now, 
this should look a little bit familiar. When I was looking, if, when we introduced Newton's second law, the second order, ordinary differential equations, I went through this list of all the forms of the force for which we could solve it. And one particular form was when the force was just a function of the position. And remember, in that case, we, we, were, we found this special integral, 1 half mv squared plus v of r. That, I said, was looked like energy, kinetic plus potential. And now that's exactly what we're seeing here. But I haven't talked about what kinetic plus potential energy will mean. That's in the next chapter. So I'll end the main, the main discussion of, the, of uh, the theory of the chapter here. And in the next lecture, I will talk about the problem sets. And this is a really fun problem set. Okay, that's all for now. See you next time. Bye.